in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. hallelujah praise the name of the lord good morning everybody thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you the lord bless you the lord bless you in jesus name amen let's pray father we honor you and we thank you for the privilege of life the word of god declares that you teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom thank you for this day thank you for this beautiful family lord we thank you for all who have connected by way of television by way of internet i declare oh god that the times that we have to share together will be most profitable let the name of the lord be praised for in jesus name i pray god bless you please be seated greetings and blessings of grace to all of us and to our global family, thank you so much. Um, my, my birthdays are usually uncomfortable times for me. I'm a very quiet, private person. Um, so birthdays give people the legitimacy to just come into your space. And um, I have been very, very blessed and honored Thank you. Let me begin. I'll start this broadcast with my appreciation and I'll also end it with my appreciation. Um, I want to thank everyone, honestly. Um, God has given me unique acceptance among kinds of people from every nation, every territory, Christians, Muslims, and you know the age range the young the old and all of that i want to specially honor many of our fathers of faith in this nation who called send their prayer many of them um, spoke from the depth of their spirit from a father to a son blessing me and this for me was the highlight of um everything this morning so i'm deeply grateful and then of course to all of you thank you so much um i can only imagine the things that um have had to go into this preparation thank you thank you for all that you have done and then to our global family um the lord will honor you in jesus name i've taught you and you've heard me say it again that not everybody believes you are such a big deal. Not everybody believes there are people who Jesus Christ to them is the son of the living God. There are people who Jesus Christ to them is the son of Mary. There are people who Jesus Christ to them is one in partnership with Beelzebub. There are people who Jesus Christ to them is just a threat to their relevance. But in any case, when he found people who loved him sincerely, whether it was the woman at the well, whether it was Mary, whether it was John, he communicated love and honor. And this is 
uh, what I want to start this broadcast with. Thank you to kings, to nobles, gatekeepers, our global family, believers, pastors, mentors, fathers, contemporaries, prodigies, sons, daughters. Thank you for this opportunity. Hallelujah. Amen. My prayer for you up front is found in Philippians chapter 1, Philippians 1. We'll read from verse 3 to 6, Philippians chapter 1, from verse 3 to 6, Philippians 1. Let me turn it um, for sake of time. Philippians chapter 1, from verse 3. He says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, making requests with joy, verse 5, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. He says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. May that be so for you in Jesus' name. Um, I want to thank God for the impact that he's granted me the privilege to be part of, to sponsor even in the lives of many, and to be able to help lead and teach and raise people who are doing, perpetuating the same across the globe impact is very important when you become a solution and this is what this ministry today have come or has come to represent i am truly honored i cannot begin to tell you the testimonies that people send do you know that what we share on stage here without exaggeration is not near i would say one tenth of the mighty and marvelous things that god is doing through this ministry across the globe and um, it is only thoughtful and it is only spiritual that we take the time to thank Jesus, who is the son of the living God, the one behind this. He came to Nicodemus by night and said, John chapter 3 and verse 2, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and he said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these miracles except God with him there are results that cannot be produced just intellectually there are results that cannot be produced just mechanically it will take the power of God and we thank God for the souls that continue to be saved for the lives transformed you know nations and contributing to the development of nations and kings and we thank God for that. We give him all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'll go straight to the teaching and the charge. This for me has been a culture for many years that during my birthday, I take the time to just share a few thoughts and contemplations with the body of Christ and then get to speak first over our global family and then by extension to the body. So in one minute, I'd like us to pray and ask that the Lord himself will grant us the ability to understand and then to receive. Are you praying? In one minute, we're praying. Father, we thank you and we bless you because you are faithful. We have come to learn. We have come to receive. Several connected across the globe speak to our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For this teaching, there are four major contemplations that the Lord has put in my heart. Um, first for us here, and then it extends as a contribution to the body of Christ. I'm sent to the body of Christ, and it's an honor to be able to provide that contribution to the strengthening and the building of the body. This, of course, is my principal and primary constituency, but then it extends to the entire body. The first thing I want to talk about that the Lord put in my heart 
is the power of purpose the power of purpose hallelujah tomorrow is miracle service by the grace of god and um, we're going to be having thousands and potentially millions of people connecting from across the globe and the high point of the miracle service is usually when we have the opportunity to bring before the lord our requests and cry before the lord to visit us and give us testimonies but i have learned that desires and pursuits only become profitable to us when they are connected to purpose desires and pursuits only become profitable to us when they are connected to purpose that nothing in itself brings satisfaction except and unless it is connected to a bigger purpose other than itself please never forget this this is my first message so purpose attempts to answer the question why why do you want the power why do you want the money why do you want the anointing why do you want the fame why do you want for politicians the political office why do you want promotion our lives are full of requests and desires and petitions both secret and opened and let me tell you this motif is a principal determinant as far as answered prayer is concerned in the kingdom i vet my life and i vet my desires every once and again as an individual and then by the privilege of god's grace as a man of god to find out that if find out if my desires are just blind pursuits just for self-aggrandizement or they are connected to kingdom come many people do not understand the power of purpose so we pursue desires disconnected from purpose and when we do obtain those desires you will find out that the satisfaction and the fulfillment we thought they would bring they are unable to bring for instance there are people who want cars and they hope that a car in itself will bring them joy they want houses they want children they want um, a great life pastors and ministers they want fame you know celebrity and all those kinds of things by reason of God's grace and what he's done and is doing through my life um, every time people reach me and try to give an impression like apostle you are so fortunate you are so lucky the world loves you people love you I, I, and I look at them most times and especially when they now begin to covet that kind of thing I know they are sincere but then I tell them that nothing in itself brings satisfaction believe me until and unless it is connected to purpose so this is my first message to all of us our global family and then to the body of christ we must get back to the place of purpose more than desires we cannot just camp around the realm of desires in terms of our want for achievements and so on and so forth more than desires more than pursuits we must return to the place of purpose and let me propose for us one theme and the central purpose for our lives as believers write this down please I wrote something very important here that I'd want us to pay attention to beyond personal ambitions beyond personal ambitions beyond the desire to outshine sadly beyond the desire to be successful and celebrated we must seek to see jesus revealed and jesus glorified as our ultimate purpose beyond personal ambitions beyond the desire to outshine beyond the desire to be successful and celebrated we must seek to see Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified as our highest and our greatest purpose. John chapter 3 and verse 30. John 3, 30. 
John 3 30 he says that I may John 3 30 that I may increase he says that I may decrease John was speaking that he must increase I must decrease it does not mean to lose relevance it means that with respect to Jesus I am satisfied if nobody sees me that if my life can become a ladder for people to see Jesus I do not mind even if I go out of relevance what a powerful desire he must increase but I must decrease we live in a celebrity driven world where there is such an obsession for fame we want to be seen we want to be known but let me tell you sincerely from the integrity of scripture if you ever want to live a meaningful life a life that counts more than your fame and ambition and all of those things you must desire to see Jesus lifted and glorified John 17 and verse 1 John 17 and verse 1 the Bible says that Jesus lifted up John 17 and verse 1 that he lifted up his eyes to the heavens he was about to pray now and he lifted his eyes to the heavens and said father the hour is come glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so in the kingdom the only reason why God lifts people brings you to what you know to be celebrity status if you use that for want of word is that he's given you an opportunity that if and when you arrive there you don't just stop there and become the central focus that you allow yourself to be a ladder for Jesus to be seen you've heard me say it countless times that years ago the Lord told me he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you very simple condition to let men see me be lifted high be lifted high oh lord be lifted high for you are holy righteous and worthy oh lord One more time. We lift you high. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Be lifted high. For you are holy. My one desire my greatest purpose in life is not to be a good preacher believe me my greatest desire in life is not to be a celebrity no my greatest desire in life is not to have the largest church the largest ministry in all fairness my greatest desire is that I'm able to use my life and even my lifetime as a drink offering to be able to reveal Jesus to my generation and to bring him glory and then to also inspire a generation to love to serve to seek and to pursue Jesus that's it no matter what else works in my life if this fails I failed but no matter what fails in my life if this worked I won this is the template that governs my life more than some of the things that drive us it is a reason why you would notice that respectfully speaking I am very disconnected to several things that seem to each people in our generation not I don't have any particular bias against love and want of these things but it is the extent of my determination to live a life that allows Jesus to be revealed and glorified God has so worked in me honoring that desire and disconnected me from several things that seem to be an obsession for people so my first message today 
to our global family and then to the family of believers and as many who are connected this has no prejudice or bias whether you are a Christian or Muslim these are truths that will improve any life at all any life that cares to listen connect your desire for wealth to purpose use purpose to vet your desire use purpose to prune your desire use purpose to prune your pursuit ask yourself that question why am i doing the things i am doing because you see the way we live our lives and the way we make it a do or die affair for everything it is because the motivation may be wrong when you connect your life to purpose and if that purpose is to reveal and to glorify jesus I assure you that many things in your life will no longer be a do or die affair. My first message, the power of purpose. You must answer the question why. Why am I obsessed about wanting to be rich? Why am I obsessed about wanting to be the man of God everybody sees? Why am I obsessed about having the largest or greatest or most impactful ministry? Why do I want to become the businessman that everybody sees? Why do I want to become the politician that everybody sees? What is the obsession behind becoming a celebrity? Our world is full of great people who kill themselves, committed suicide, even at the height of supposed successes. Why? Because they did not connect their pursuit to purpose. Jesus revealed Jesus glorified remains the anthem for my life and the anthem for this ministry in the name of Jesus Christ number two the second thing I want to talk about in this broadcast that the Lord placed so strongly in my heart I had to pray this for my own self even before bringing this is the purity of heart write it down please the purity of of heart these are not the kinds of messages that you easily hear in the body of Christ again sadly the purity of heart Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8 there is a powerful blessing that is connected according to scripture to purity of heart Matthew 5 and verse 8 let me turn it here Matthew 5 and verse 8 it says blessed are the pure in heart you know the blessing it says for they shall see god very powerful scripture not blessed are the believers not blessed are those who fast not blessed are those who pray not blessed are those who go to church not blessed are those who preach this very blessing is connected to those who are pure in heart what does it mean to be pure in heart jesus looked at a man called nathaniel and he said nathaniel when they called on nathaniel this was a man who was even doubting the ministry of jesus and yet jesus said an israelite indeed in whom there is no guile that is the definition of being pure in heart to be pure in heart is not about perfection and blamelessness. To be pure in heart is that intrinsically you are void and free of guile, falsehood, deception, and wickedness. That's what it means to be pure in heart. And the Bible says the blessing is they shall see God. You know what that means? It doesn't just mean they shall have visionary encounters of God. They will always see God manifest in their situation. Why? Because whether they are right or wrong, the purity of their heart sustains an attracting power. So you can find people who doctrinally are wrong, as far as the pursuit of purpose are wrong and yet God seems to show up in their lives because the, there is a blessing that those who are pure in heart will see God they will see God show up they will see God step in they will see God arise for them that means they will never be left in shame because of the purity of heart is someone learning Proverbs chapter 16 
Let's read from verse 16 to 19. Proverbs 16, 16 to 19. But the verse of emphasis is verse 18. Proverbs chapter 16 from verse 16 to 19. Proverbs 6, I meant to say. Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. 6, 16 to 19. Watch this. It says, a proud look. These six things that the Lord hate. And seven are an abomination to him. So the Lord hates this. Number one, a proud look. Number two, a lying tongue. Number three, hands that shed innocent blood. Number four, a heart that devised wicked imagination. That's it right there. Feet that be swift to running to mischief. 19, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. That these six things and seven, the Lord is saying, I personally hate it. Back to verse 18. It says, a heart that devised wicked imagination. This is a heart that is not pure. And let me tell you, you can be a believer and still have this kind of heart. You can be a preacher and still have this kind of heart. A heart that intrinsically devised wicked imagination. One of the reasons why God judged the earth in the days of Noah it was more than just that they were sinners. It was that the heart of man was perpetually devising wickedness and imagination. Purity of heart. We can have, I wrote here, we can have good and even godly activities but are inspired by wrong or corrupt motives. You can have a very godly activity as a man of God, as a businessman, and yet because your heart is not pure, it will not bring the blessing that should come with it. I'm reminded of John chapter 12, the first six verses. Very classic scripture that reveals to us the corruption that is intrinsic within the heart of man. The Bible says, then six days before the Passover came, Six, then Jesus, six days before the Passover, he came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. We're reading to six, verse two. It says, and they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Verse three. The Bible says, then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment now watch the reaction the bible says then saith one of his disciples judas is cariot simon's son which should betray him why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor very good activity if you were to judge him by that statement, you would say, what a lovely man who loved the poor. But the Bible is quick to tell us, verse 6, that this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put. That means he was using a very good statement, but it was to achieve a selfish reason. Unfortunately, there are so many in the body of Christ today, if you judge by what they are saying, if you judge by what they are doing, you will say it is true. But behind the scenes is a corrupt and a wicked heart that is not pure at all. Are we together? purity of heart this he said not that he cared for the poor this he said not that he cared for the lost this he said not that he cared for the ignorant this he said not that he cared for the confused this he said not that he cared for the body of Christ but because he was a thief purity of heart 
I have met some of the worst of the worst people you can think and I've had the honor of sitting down with some of them smokers liars all kinds of terrible people and I am amazed sometimes at the depth and the extent of purity that is in their heart in the height of the supposed decadence around their lives once you shift beyond that veil you will find out that this is a sincere person I have met idol worshippers I have met supposedly wicked people and then when you sit with them and vet them you even use their own life to repent but I have met people who are masters of communication as ministers as business people I have met powerful people I have met great people I've met all kinds of great people honorable people and yet in the midst of it you find out that there is corruption within their heart it is my prayer first for myself for you for our global family please let's honor Reverend Sam Oye thank you thank you thank you God bless you for your presence sir hallelujah are we together blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God blessed are the pure in heart there were a group of people in the Bible that every time Jesus met he always reached out to them because although they were sinners they were pure in heart he met the woman at the well he saw a woman with a terrible life but beyond that layer she was pure in heart he met Nicodemus and he saw that he was pure in heart but there were a few people who were always at his crusades always at his programs and yet because they were not pure in heart they never received anything my second message to the body of Christ is that we must return to the purity of heart genuinely desire the good of all and the good of the body write this down genuinely desire the good of all and the good of the body genuinely desire the good of all and the good of the body I wrote here do not wish for anticipate and even support the downfall or the destruction of anyone in the body of Christ do not wish for do not anticipate and do not even support the downfall or the destruction of anyone in the body Luke chapter 2 and verse 14 see what happened to the earth as Jesus was born Luke chapter 2 not Leviticus Luke 2 14 it says glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill towards men because Jesus was born he said this is the consequence glory to God in the highest and on earth there should be peace and goodwill towards men Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10 Galatians 6 and verse 10 Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10 he says as we have as we have therefore opportunity let us do good unto all men especially unto them who are of the household of faith don't sit down and wish for any church any man of God any ministry any assembly and you anticipate evil and rejoice when it happens that is that is lack of purity of heart it says the pure in heart will see God hallelujah yeah. once upon a time Jesus sent the disciples towards Jerusalem the Bible says and then when they went there they were not received and Jesus was surprised and the disciples came and said listen should we call down fire on them as Elijah did remember Elijah was a no-nonsense man and Jesus turned to them and rebuked them and said do you not know what spirit you are of that means what is the meaning of that purity of heart every time I pray I ask the Lord I say beyond being a preacher may my heart be sincere towards you 
and towards men. Is someone learning? Because there is a growing absence of the purity of heart. Sadly, even within the body of Christ, the degree to which we enjoy, we celebrate and even promote the pain of others is becoming alarming. And there has to be a system of managing and curbing this. It's an attack on the, de on, on the body of Christ by the devil. Purity of heart. Wish for the good of all. Wish for the good of everyone in the body. Do not wish for, anticipate, or even support the downfall or the destruction of anyone in the body. Number three. The third message I have, first for us, and then it extends to the body of Christ. This is an emphasis. The unity of the body. I truly believe that among the many assignments that the Lord has given me, this is one of my core assignments to the body. To be a contributor to attaining this state of unity within the body. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 13. Please let's hurry up. Ephesians 4 and verse 13. This is the reason why he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. He says, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, he says, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The unity of faith. The unity of faith. Very, very, very powerful scripture. Romans chapter 12 from verse 4. Romans chapter 12. It says, for as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Take note of that. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members, and every one members one of, one of another. Verse 6. We're reading to 8. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Seven, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching. Verse eight, it says, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. You've heard me say there are dimensions of God and in God that can never be captured and revealed by a single individual. No matter how yielded, no matter how anointed, there are dimensions in God made for the profiting of the body that no single individual, no matter how aligned, you just cannot. It is not part of God's system. No matter how yielded we are, Joshua Selman cannot be. Listen, if the whole world becomes a reflection of Joshua Selman's work with God, the world is going to be an incomplete and imbalanced spiritual place. Because no matter how I love God, no matter how yielded I am, there are dimensions that will not be given to me, yet are needed for the body. We must admit this as men of God unashamedly and then be open to embrace dimensions that are needed and useful for the body but are not captured in our personal experiences. No single individual can capture and reveal all of God. No. Hallelujah. Now, the challenge is that, especially for we preachers, respectfully speaking, every dimension we do not see manifesting in our lives, out of insecurity largely, we trivialize it and even culture people to believe it is not useful and necessary. Respectfully speaking, I think there is a serious problem there. And I'm speaking in love with due honor to the body. Are we together? So if I'm one who is not given to the dynamics of excellence and administration, but say I prophesy and I heal the sick, 
I will easily get intimidated because if I am to receive that dimension in my life and ministry and business, I will have to acknowledge the one God gave that grace to. And since I do not want to acknowledge anybody, I want to stand alone as Alpha Omega. I would rather reject and trivialize that grace than for me to admit that I am incomplete even though yielded and then honor that grace and receive it into my space to improve my life. Let me tell you sincerely, there are many believers today and many troubles in the body of Christ whose solutions were there before the trouble came. But the inability to see the diversity of the body and the wisdom and the grace that has been invested across various dimensions of the body. There are people who have died today who had no business dying if they knew that somewhere in the body is resident the power of life. If they knew that somewhere in the body is the wisdom to bring people out of very simple problems. The unity of faith no single individual i have told you this from a standpoint of administration from a standpoint of faith and the mandate god has given us we owe ourselves and we owe the kingdom the duty to focus on that which was given to us and to drive the vision of the ministry to fruition but with respect to kingdom come you must look beyond koinonia to be holistically built more than koinonia and more than joshua selman's contribution to your spiritual life your arms must be open to the other diversities within the body of christ men of god we must be secured enough to teach this truth to people that i do not have everything even though i have the richness of that which i've been given powerful jesus himself as the son of the living god needed help and he did not reject, reject the ministry of um, Simon of Cyrene to help him carry the cross. He would have pushed him and said, I am self-sufficient. Jesus would have died, but not on a tree. And he never would have died a curse. Because a curse would have to die on the tree. Someone had to help him to finish that assignment. Is God helping us? This is very important. The unity of faith. The unity of faith. I look forward to a time where the body of Christ will attain this state called the unity of faith. Like I would always do, let me give us um, four keys that will help the body of Christ attain unity. This is my contribution. It is not enough to talk about issues and talk about problems. We must scripturally, not emotionally, scripturally propose solutions that can help the body attain to that state of unity. Number one, the first key is genuine love for God and for men. We cannot attain unity as believers if there is no genuine love for God and genuine love for men genuine love for god genuine love for men write for reference please first john chapter 4 you read from verse 7 to 21 we may not have the time to read everything but just write for reference first john chapter 4 7 to 21 romans chapter 12 and verse 10 romans 12 10 and then john 13 35 12 10 says be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love he says in honor preferring one another john chapter 13 and verse 35 very instructive scripture he says by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you do well as a pastor not when you pray in tongues and fast not when you teach excellently not when you are doing well as a businessman he says when you have love one for another many people love jesus but they hate those he loves isn't it a mystery one of the ways you love a man is by loving who and what he loves. I love Jesus, but I hate those he died for. I love Jesus, but I hate those he's interceding for. I love Jesus, but I hate those who bear his name. 
I love the head, but I hate his body. No. Genuine love for God. Number two, the second key that will help the body attain unto the unity of faith is mutual honor. I cannot emphasize this enough. Mutual honor. Mutual honor. Mutual honor. Hallelujah. Mutual honor. When the man of God stepped in here to sit down, I had to take that time to acknowledge him leaving his busy schedule and everything he had to do to come he would have just followed at home but then to come and sit down and grace this broadcast it's an honor and he's deserving of it and it would be foolish stupid childish and immature to ignore that sacrifice of his presence can i tell you this until we restore the ministry of honor to the body forget about unity we will keep talking about it and it will be gibberish that does not have substance honor must be mutual what is honor honor is the discerning honor is the celebrating and where applicable the rewarding of individuals for their unique contributions hallelujah as much as i love to sing my precious people here have great voices that God has given them, amazing people. Sometimes when I hear them sing, I just nod my head and I say, oh dear, preaching, look what you've done to my voice. And I just laugh it over and I appreciate them. Let me tell you this. Every time you see what you cannot do being done, don't trivialize it. Every time you see what you cannot do being done, you prayed for the sick secretly the person was not healed and you watch the person healed don't trivialize it mm -mm. you gave somebody counsel and he failed woefully because of your counsel and here is someone who counsels and builds people to an enviable destiny don't trivialize it honor must be mutual what does that mean that means do not sit in a position where you are the only one who keeps receiving there are people who do you know I can tell you respectfully speaking and this is because I'm talking to the body of Christ it is a weakness in humans most of the things that we criticize or demean in others if people celebrate us for it we enjoy it and sap that glory are we together yeah. you meet a leader who may be sarcastic or may not be well-meaning over people and look at him and say you know I've looked at your life and I think you're an exceptional person that same person will be laughing and say really we glory be to God so somewhere within our hearts we desire even when we know it is a lie we still desire to enjoy and serve all that why would you insult and stop others from celebrating a man a woman a politician a businessman a man of God for instance whereas that is something you crave for and sometimes so desperately mutual honor is the solution thank you so much you are a great man of God or you're a great businessman I read your book and my goodness the wisdom that came from that book and the man you who they celebrated you don't just say wonderful no 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 thank you for the thoughtfulness to have even you know the unashamedness to communicate honor I appreciate you too it's a culture I've indoctrinated myself that nobody will indefinitely keep celebrating me and then I keep being a receiver without being a giver and I will do so unashamedly this is why I started with my honor and appreciation it's not a ritual it is from my heart hallelujah love for the body and mutual honor businessmen let us respect ourselves men of God let us respect ourselves parents respect yourself regions respect yourselves are we together until there is mutual honor the moment we make it a point of duty to be excited in demeaning downplaying trivializing the relevance and the contribution listen by the reason of the election of grace and by the reason of our personal sacrifices the truth is we are not the same in terms of impact in terms of our contribution 
in terms of whatever but i you've heard me say it that the least person in the body of christ is doing the best he or she knows to do and we must be able to acknowledge it there are times that i meet men of god sometimes they come to me for prayer and then i say what are you doing oh i'm a pastor um, by God's grace we have 30 or 40 members and they are laughing they are saying it's not even I mean your entire worship team is more than that and I stop them immediately I tell them every one person Jesus gave you he died for them and so don't you ever allow yourself to be intimidated with what you think God is doing many people will enjoy it and say don't worry you're a small boy you are starting don't worry you don't do that there are times people send me recharge card and they can send me a recharge card of 100 naira and say apostle i know you don't need this this is for those people i even take the time to bend over backwards to send them a long text with a prayer how do you say sending me a recharge card of 100 naira is nothing the heart the thoughtfulness the intention how many men of god are in the world that you get up i must be stupid to not acknowledge that Listen, let me tell you, you will hardly be able to criticize people you genuinely celebrate. Are we together? Mutual honor. Mutual honor. Mutual honor. We must practice that. The final step is forbearance and tolerance. I have taught this again. The Bible says to forbear. Two scriptures very quickly. Colossians chapter 3 from verse 12 to 13. Colossians 3, 12 to 13. Colossians 3, 12 to 13. When you read on, it says, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Uh-huh. Forbearing one another. You know what forbearance is? Or tolerance. There is a difference between forgiveness and forbearance forgiveness has to do with pardoning a default that you intend not to happen again forbearance is creating a permanent system of accommodation for the weakness or the limitation of that individual because it will happen again and again and again there are many people you do not need to forgive you need to forbear If a noisy person tells you I'm sorry for being noisy that person does not need forgiveness that person needs forbearance because five minutes after that that heartfelt communication of of um, of, of plea the person is going to rant at it again can I tell you this I wish I can tell you every ill we see in the body of Christ today will disappear but I'll be lying in fact that reminds me let me teach something that I think maybe just to add to it listen this is a kind advice to our global family and as many who care to listen listen carefully using criticisms using ill speakings listen carefully using sarcasms as a way of addressing negative things in the body of Christ is the weakest the weakest way of preaching the gospel in fact the most ineffective way of preaching the gospel it has never produced any sustainable results can I tell you the truth there is nothing happening in the body of Christ today that started today it was there right from the early church that's why we need to be students of Scripture whether issues that relate to fidelity and morality issues that relate to character issues that relate to extra biblical practices issues all of these issues have been there in the bible they are not just coming they have always been there hallelujah thank you so much my dear people the crew from gombe pastor sam dogara god bless you thank you Are we blessed this is not the first time witchcraft is happening in the body of Christ this is not the first time wrong things are happening in the body of Christ but let me tell you the reason why the church still went forward to become like this because your emphasis becomes your direction 
the Bible says so mightily grew the word not the issues what was mightily exalted was what prevailed so mightily grew the word and prevailed in spite of what was happening in the early church they were committed and sincere people who continue to give their best and to drive the gospel and in spite of all of the limitations and the troubles within the body with gallancy they handed over that button and transited in glory there were times of persecution in the body of Christ there were times of governmental persecution in the body of Christ so mightily grew the word and prevailed I have said it and I will continue to say it that correcting people in the body of Christ is a ministry and not everybody is given that ministry the same way no not everybody is a police officer or a law enforcement agent even if you see two people fighting you may do your best to stop them but when you want to deal with that issue you hand it over to the law and people accredited with wisdom and intelligence to be able to deal with it if we do not manage this we are going to produce all kinds of problem within the body of Christ they say uneasy lies the head that wears the crown when some of our fathers were praying for me today I listened carefully to everything they said and they prayed and blessed me from their heart I was on my knees with my hands lifted listening to them and receiving everything they said pouring out wisdom from their prayers I understood what they were saying we have to be careful especially we the younger ministers who are just starting there are many heights we have not climbed yet there are many things we do not know yet we owe a duty to be contributors to the building of the body of Christ not the confusion of the body of Christ now the challenge with this kind of approach usually are the younger believers who are completely confused some of those younger believers will lose the faith simply because they do not understand the, it's like everything based on the propositions that come to the body of Christ it is safe based on so many propositions that have happened through the years to even believe that nobody is genuine in the body of Christ no, from people respectfully who have had all kinds of visions of seeing all kinds of men of God every man of God in hell to those who believe every even if Jesus comes now and walks upon the earth somebody will still see a vision of him as Beelzebub we have to be careful one day God will mark our script all of us both the commentators and the players will stand before the judge are we together very very important I love the body of Christ I respect the body of Christ you will never see me open my mouth to talk ill or speak ill of any man of God or any ministry I sincerely desire the growth of every man of God every ministry and every individual now in truth I have my reservations doctrinally speaking in truth I have my that are based on the dealings of God there are things I probably would not have approached it that way but in all of it even in the midst of challenging things that I feel are faulty I make sure that it is done in love let me recommend an alternative Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 15 let me recommend an alternative to this wrong or poor approach that we this template we are using in the body of Christ in a bid to restore what we call sanctity or restore righteousness we have to be careful the Bible says but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ can I tell you even if what you are saying is true the moment the love component is extracted from it people no longer become interested this is one thing you need to know with people before people ever attempt to listen to you whether as a man of God this is true even for politics this is true even for whatever it is before you talk about politicians you talk about whatever people vet the love factor in you the moment they find out that there is no genuine love they don't care what you are saying again 
speaking the truth in love is a greater alternative a more effective alternative to criticism to tearing down to demeaning no don't do that don't sit down and be criticizing a parent and their child you are criticizing how they are raising their child whereas your own child you are not sure of what your child is and you are there tearing down somebody else no don't sit down and criticize another man's church ministry institution that is not your assignment i will repeat it again it is the most inefficient way historically speaking biblically speaking of preaching the gospel no one has ever won that way the alternative is this that i give to you to speak the truth in love the fourth key the fourth key to attaining unity in the body of christ is to pray for the body ah i cannot emphasize this enough pray for the body pray for the body pray for the body ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18 we must pray for the body of christ ephesians 6 18 praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with perseverance and supplication for all saints for all saints for all saints first timothy first timothy chapter 2 and verse 1 first timothy 2 and verse 1 is god helping us first timothy 2 and verse 1 i exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercession and giving of thanks be made for all men is that in your bible for all men for all men you must pray there are many people today who are my friends in ministry my friends in leadership there are many areas we do not directly agree and we are aware that we do not agree in these areas yet the bond of friendship is extremely powerful and altogether profitable to both of us listen please hear me i'm teaching you this from a heart of love because i owe you as my dear people and then as a contribution to the body of christ this is especially for spiritual leaders and it extends to all kinds of leaders we must be careful do not create a system of hatred and sedition and party spirit just because you do not agree doctrinally or just because you do not agree as far as certain thoughts are concerned we must be careful if i mentor believers to say any man of god you see who is not preaching what I am preaching or is not part of the fold whether by covenant connection reject the person throw away the person that is a terrible thing it is a wicked statement because if Christ tarries one day I will not be here but the error see errors don't easily die even when those who bring them are long gone it will still be in the system and can become a pandemic hallelujah yeah. there are many believers today whose spiritual lives would have been improved greatly if the accommodation were given to them to be able to tap and receive from the rich heritage that is within the body for instance someone may be struggling with let's say lost or whatever and the holy spirit can speak to the person listen to this man of god or this father of faith's message and he knows that contained within that man and that ministry and that father of faith is the grace to cure this in one day but simply because a subliminal advice a body language that has been given by either his man of god or something of that sort they would rather sit down and die in silence than to tap into the blessing there are people who in within one month their financial status can change if only their hearts will be open to receive of the provision of wisdom and grace that is resident within the body but they would rather sit down and die in silence hallelujah 
we must intercede for the body of Christ not criticize the body of Christ to pray one of the greatest gifts that anyone can give me as a man of God is to pray for me you give me food I will eat I will go to the toilet and that is it you give me whatever all of that will go but when you pray for me you are making investments for my destiny is one of the things that give me joy it gives me joy during my birthday because there are several ministries across the globe prayer chains the last one week has been full of all kinds of prayer night vigils prayer chains just for me now i honor those people and i appreciate them and as many as i could reach i told them thank you for this let us pray you do not know the kind of attack that is on every evangelist every apostle every reverend every bishop every whoever names the name of christ the moment you stand for jesus just be sure that satan is coming after you not even jesus was spared when he left him the bible says he left him for a season let me encourage everyone listening please pray for your pastor anything you look for in the body of christ you will find it if you look for error you will find it if you look for faults you will find it if you look for weaknesses you will find it if you look for strength you will find it if you look for satan you will find him if you look for jesus you will find him if you look for flesh you will find him if you look for sincerity you will find it it is all within the body and in the midst of the lamb stands I saw one like the son of man the good news is that in the midst of all of these things Jesus is still in his body I am personally convinced that every church and every ministry that sincerely names the name of Christ for the sake of the witness of Christ Jesus Christ will always leave a witness hallelujah the final thing I will say about the unity of faith is the moment you believe you are the only one who is right, you are wrong. Let me repeat. The moment you believe you are the only one who is right, you are wrong. Because believing you are the only one who is right is number one, an insult to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number two, an insult to the ministry of the fivefold, the priesthood. Number three, an insult to the power of the cross. Can I tell you, you never find any point from when Jesus died and resurrected where only one individual was standing in righteousness. No, you will find that in the days of Noah. You will find that in the Old Testament. But from the moment the Spirit was poured lavishly without measure, the Spirit will always have witnesses. Remember, He's called the Spirit of Truth. So away with some of this mentality that we carry around the body where we believe Joshua Selman believing, I am the only one who is right. I am the only one who is teaching what is correct. I am the only one who is mentoring correctly. I can tell you by the authority of scripture that is absolute nonsense mm -mm. we are called to communicate the dimension of truth as given to us with sincerity and truth while praying for the body of Christ and helping to manage the excesses but with honor for all the other dimensions I will repeat it is absolute nonsense if I, if I ever stand here in koinonia and teach you and make you believe that nobody else knows that truth how did you learn it then because a man cannot receive anything except it is given so the one who received and the one who gave who is greater don't you ever believe that there are unrighteous people unholy people and weak people in the body and just a few who God came to them oh such a deception most of those things came from culture and because of our inability to contend for transformation I'm saying this with love to help the body for the sake of believers that are coming up I repeat it is nonsense Christ is still in his body the Holy Spirit is as powerful as ever helping people to encounter Jesus 
even if every man of God in the body fails the body will still not die because in a great house what made the house great was not the vessels what made the house great was the builder the builder is still there regardless the quality of vessels please let us not demean the body of Christ I'm saying this because many people if we don't salvage the body of Christ many people will leave the Christian faith justifiably into extra biblical practices I may fail as an individual but the body cannot fail I may fail as a church but the body cannot fail I announce to all and sundry again that the body of Christ is a living system with Christ himself being the head of the body and the fact that he's the head of the body we cannot fail in the name of Jesus Christ it says I will build my church don't insult that architect he's a master builder no man of God builds the church no doctrine builds the church there is the builder he's still building so as much as we observe limitations in the body as much as we address them as much as we manage this please let us not give the world an impression like the church is a weak defeated entity full of licentious people full of weak people no the church that Jesus died for is a living church that is alive the church that Jesus died for is a church that is powerful he is the builder there are things that cannot be done by any other institution on earth except the church all my days on earth I will away the moment that I see you face to face mm. Nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry Treasure of my heart and of my soul in my weakness you are merciful redeemer of my past and present wrong you're the holder of my future days to come amazing so who is like you lord in all the earth much less love and beauty and less worth nothing in this world can satisfy jesus you're the cup that will run dry message number one to the body of christ is the power of purpose connect every desire to purpose Otherwise, you would not find fulfillment. And I have proposed to you the theme for our living and that which drives us to see Jesus revealed and to see Jesus glorified. Number two, the purity of heart. We must return to vet the two states of our heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God number three the unity of the body oh this is my prayer unity does not mean uniformity the body of Christ will never do the same thing but we can be motivated by the same purpose I look forward to times when a man of God will be organizing crusade and another man of God who may not totally agree doctrinally can say this is my seed I'm sending bosses you still keep your reservation as far as mentoring and building the people committed to you is concerned but you are able to stand to say I love this Jesus is glorified he's bigger than what I feel or I do not feel I look forward to times when men of God can bump into themselves whether at the airport somewhere oh how are you how is the work may God bless you not you are this you are that no you are carnal you are satanic go away no it won't happen that way it's the same heaven we're going to 
I wonder what is going to happen when we all get there. Hmm. Because none of us built it. And since the one who built it admitted all of us, there are not five tables. There is one giant table, that supper. We're all sitting there. Let me tell you this before I talk about the last point and we pray. Do you know, I learned this very early in life and ministry, that some of the people making the most impact spiritually, I say this respectfully speaking, they are not the Joshua Selmans you are seeing. Believe me, thank God for the little and the bits that we are doing. But if God is to assess and arrange people on earth, number one, based on their closeness to him, and number two, based on the impact, you will be surprised that some of us that you celebrate will be at the back of the queue, thanking God that we are even in the queue. And you'll be surprised that those you will see in front are not on TV. Nobody knows them. They may be pastors of 10 members. Some of them may be quiet intercessors like some of our mothers. Anna the prophetesses praying for Jesus to succeed. The day I recognized this and I learned this, it gave me that sense to know that every time I stand before God's people and as God continues to lift me, I see it as a privilege and a debt that I must pay. I don't stand here simply because I'm the best and the finest. I know you have celebrated me and I know you are sincere, but I'm wise enough to know the truth. When we stand before him, you will see a woman who could not even speak English. When we stand before him, you will see one gardener somewhere who never had the privilege to be on TV. When we stand before him, you will see one intercessor from a village, one missionary that served God quietly till he died. And based on that spiritual stratification, some of us who have been making noise from time immemorial, God will now rearrange us and will stand at the back. And some of those quiet people will come with honor and stand in front. Knowing this should give us wisdom early. We stand here only by grace. We minister. Our sufficiency is not of ourselves, but of Christ who has made us able ministers. Accepting this is not weakness. Accepting this is great strength. Number four. My fourth message to the body of Christ and to our global family before we pray it's a very old message that many believers do not hear again to live with eternity in view to live with eternity in view first corinthians 15 and verse 19 hmm. if in this life only we have hope in Christ. We are of all men. Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done, all my treasures will mean nothing. Only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find treasure jewels in married clay turning sinners into saints and I will always sing your praise Here on earth and ever after For you've shown me heaven's my true home When it's all been said and done You're my life when life is gone I've sang this song for many years and it never gets old. Can I tell you this? 
Hmm. Give me Revelation chapter 20 and verse 11. One day we will stand before Jesus. Please listen to me. A day will come you will wake up in the morning and find out there is no koinonia again. There is no election again, Nigeria. A day will come you will get up in the morning and you'll find out, dear civil servant, there is no going for work again. A day will come you will get up in the morning and find out the enemy you seek to die, both you and him, the scene has changed. A day will come you will get up and you will find out the people who massage your ego and lie to you, they are no longer there. And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. Is that in your Bible? And there was found no place for them. Verse 12. We're reading to 15. And I saw the dead, small and great. This is the thing about death that is scary. Small and great. That means the concept of small and great is a relative statement only within the confines of earth with respect to death does not know small does not know great stand before god notice the name of any there's no preacher's name mentioned there there's no businessman's name mentioned there there's no title and politician apostle professor excellency no small and great you are one of the two stand before god and the bible says the books were opened and another book was opened which was the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works this is the bible the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the death which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works. 14. And death and hell itself were cast into the lake of fire. He said, this is the second death. The last verse. And whosoever, apostle, prophet, businessman, giant in ministry, small man, whoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of of fire full stop can i tell you all of the wars we have in our world today right now we're in a time of politics and it's good to you know all kinds of people fighting president chairman national assembly thank god for that students hoping that strike will resume so that they will go to school preachers hoping that more members will come everybody hoping one day when the real referee the referee is not social media uh -uh. the referee is not the preacher when the real referee rings that bell whether you are prepared or not the match must stop and he will gather all of us and we will stand that day will be a day of pleasant surprises please hear me you must live with eternity in view no matter how long you live the highest i've seen in my life is about 136 but no matter how long you live either he will come to meet you or you will go to meet him but you must depart this realm yes we are returning back to earth but not this version of earth this will be folded like a curtain when i stand before god he's not going to say apostle how are you no <laughs> no when you stand before him, you will not say, Koinonia member, how are you? Small and great. All our titles will mean nothing. That is the day we will know that he is king of kings and lord of lords. Please let me remind us, I'm both old and new school. Permit me to be old school now. Jesus is coming back soon. I repeat it. Jesus is coming back soon. Koinonia Global, Body of Christ, Planet Earth, the Lord Jesus, the monarch of the universe is returning. He will return. I assure you, it's one of the seven pillars of the Christian faith. He's returning. 
and this life will be rolled and folded like a curtain what does that mean if all your relevance and everything that you have is just connected to money and titles and anointing and ministry and politics and any other thing you may be disappointed when he comes can I tell you the truth I made up my mind that nothing around me and nothing outside me is worth my attachment to Thank God for money, but it will come and go away. Thank God for titles, they will come and go away. We're wrapping up. Listen very carefully. This birthday broadcast, hear me, Koinonia Global and Creation and all who are listening. It is not the celebration of a celebrity. It is not a celebration of some great man. Without Christ, without Jesus, this man you see, there is very little to me as a person. I will tell you this. If there is anything in my life today that is worth celebrating, including the gift of time that was given to me, it is because he's alive and it's because he has shown mercy. Thank God for the cakes you have made. Thank God for the gifts thank God for the wonderful things and I truly I don't downplay it humbled I don't know how many times tears rolled out of my eyes as I rolled on the floor before the Lord thanking him for the gift of life but I am reminding you again bad days is not the celebration that you were born it's the celebration of what you are doing with the life that you have been given you only truly qualify to celebrate your birthday if you are living it for Jesus and living it for purpose, not if you are living. I stand before you today thanking you for your love and everything you have done for bearing our limitations, praying and upholding us. I thank my precious leaders. I want to thank the fathers of faith in this nation who have loved me so personally and invested and continue to invest in my life I do not take your fatherhood and love for granted I thank God for all of the pillars in my life the men of God senior colleagues contemporaries prodigies sons and daughters all together Koinonia Global I want to sincerely thank you from Europe to America to Asia to Africa Nigeria right here you have demonstrated levels of love that I cannot begin to explain and I'm not playing with words I really mean what I'm saying I want to thank you I want to thank my family I want to thank the workers you are seated here because of your dogged commitment the world sees the face of Joshua Selman but they do not know that there are people who make that face visible and to be able to serve God comfortably those who have sown into my life and into the ministry those who pray for me thank you thank you sincerely thank you <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah let me leave you with this if you truly desire to celebrate my birthday today let me tell you three things to do that will bring joy to my heart number one the first thing I plead that you do for me is to pray for me pray for me he said brethren pray for us more than give to me more than support what I represent please pray for me pray for me and pray for every man of God that you know and you love number one number two let me encourage you, our global family and all believers, look for two, any two koinonia teachings that has blessed you and bless somebody with it today. Any two koinonia messages that have blessed you and changed your life. The deliverance series, 
the series on the kingdom whatever look for any tool and bless someone with it number three you want to celebrate my birthday today the third and final request pray for Nigeria pray for Nigeria we are at a sensitive period of transition and for God's sake we need to take responsibility and pray for this nation we are going to act but can I tell you acting without praying will only recycle pain because only God we are only listen to me listen to me listen to me by reason of my being close by privilege to several politicians I've had all kinds of opinions and different things about perspectives in Nigeria what I'm going to tell us is we must pray and trust God to hear and know the will of God first before acting this emotional acting based on sentiments will only recycle pain I'm saying it as one who fears God and loves my nation we only stand entire God is only committed to backing and defending his will let us be aware of emotions let us be aware of sentiments we must look to Jesus and say Lord where you stand is where we stand pray for me share the message with someone and pray for Nigeria pray for our leaders present and pray for our leaders to come we owe a duty under God more than complaining more than insulting more than castigating let us pray I know that there are many things that may not seem to be the way it is in our nation now please hear me Christians pray for Nigeria Muslims pray for Nigeria even if you don't pray mean well for Nigeria hallelujah Lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase Lord make us instruments of your peace the walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are We are only safe in our nation if every other thing is safe death does not ask whether you are a Christian or Muslim death does not ask whether you are a preacher or a businessman if we are careless over our lives all of us will suffer that is the truth it is a time where we need to pray and then we need to act accordingly as God grants grace I repeat without prejudice or biases it is going to be a combination of spirituality intelligence and counsel I repeat spirituality intelligence and counsel blindly just moving with spirituality alone will still end us in trouble blindly walking with um, intelligence alone will end us in trouble blindly walking with counsel alone will end us in trouble we need that tripartite combo of spirituality intelligence and counsel hallelujah thank you very much for the privilege and the opportunity to celebrate with me I am truly truly honored I want to appreciate our global family and thank you for all of you who have listened carefully to this broadcast I also want to thank the leadership of AIT and every other television station thank you so much for the live broadcast may the Lord bless you and increase you and to our media team the Lord honor you in the name of Jesus hallelujah now I'm going to speak over your life uh, but before I do that since he's here I hope he doesn't get embarrassed I will plead with Reverend Sam Oye he's a great man of prayer to come and stand and just speak over the body of Christ even on this occasion of my birthday and then I'll round up and speak a blessing please let's rise and honor Reverend Sam Oye God bless you sir 
Are you clapping? Amen. Can we just lock hands together, everybody? Breaking the barriers between our states, our tribes, our ethnicities, our diversities, our party affiliation, and exalting the body of Christ as the most important thing in a time like this. We are asking that in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord will send the wind, the four winds, into this nation and we ask that as it was in the time of ezekiel the bible says and as i prophesied the wind came bones came together bones came together we speak in the name of jesus christ that the body of christ will come together in the name of jesus the christ we pray that from this moment everything the adversary has planted within us to divide us to compartmentalize us to make us focus on one part of the body as the whole of the body we pray that by the teaching that has gone for today let the barriers begin to break let the barriers begin to break we break the barriers between pentecostals and catholics between Catholics and Baptists, between Baptists and Methodists, we pray that Jesus alone will stand glorified in this country. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that our children will see themselves as Christians. They will not see themselves by labels. They will not see themselves as cherubim and seraphim. They will not see themselves as somebody from somewhere else. Lord, we pray from Koinonia that unity will spill across the body of Christ. We pray for everyone here that as you move out of this place, you will become an agent of unity. You will become an instrument of unity. You will become an instrument of togetherness. The Bible says how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. For there, God commands the blessing. We ask that the blessing will come on Nigeria. As we come together in the body of Christ, let the blessing rest on this country. As the church becomes united, let the nation rise. Let our nation rise. Nigeria, rise from the ashes of your past. Nigeria, rise to limelight. Nigeria, rise to become a first world. Nigeria rise from the shames we have been in. Nigeria rise from the pain we are in. Let the church rise. Let this nation rise. Our schools will walk. Our hospitals will thrive. Our roads will be properly done. We speak to every sector of this nation. We command things to work. We call for a new leadership to emerge. We call for a new leadership to emerge from Zion. Let leaders emerge from the north. Let leaders emerge from the west. Let leaders emerge from the east. Let leaders emerge from the south. We stand in the place of prayer today and we decree and declare every intention to divide this, divide this country. We frustrate it in darkness. Nigeria shall not be at war. Lives will not be lost. Let our bones come together. Let our tendons come together. Let our ligaments come together. Let our sinews come together. Nigeria, arise. Africa, arise. Our children, arise. In Jesus' mighty name, we'll pray. Would you please stretch your hands? towards this man of God you will lift up your voice to God in prayer father keep him I want you to pray like you pray for yourself I, I want you to lift up your voice I want you to lift up your voice say my father my father keep the servant of God hold him steady keep him every plot every plan 
every intention agenda every plot of the wicked we stand in the place of prayer we put an embargo on satanic intentions we divinely make legislations over satanic moves we decree and declare that their hands will not perform their enterprise their counsels will not stand their words will not prevail over joshua selman let your hand rest upon him let your mercy prevail over him guide his step direct his path lead him in the way no weapon formed against him will ever prosper every tongue that rise up against him in judgment we condemn we condemn we condemn in going out in coming in his life will not be cut short in jesus mighty name we'll pray Um, hallelujah praise the Lord I can tell you this God is doing something in the body of Christ it is like it was in the wedding in Cana listen carefully the Bible says that some people the wine finished and then there were others who came to Jesus and new wine was already there but it was not known and Jesus turned water to wine and when they took it to the, the, the leaders the rulers they said where did this come from let me tell you there is a new wine I can tell you this prophetically it is not only koinonia that represents that new wine from the west to the south the east and the west from Nigeria Ghana, Africa, South Africa, America, Europe, and even the nations and regions that we think Christianity is going. Listen, trust the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God, first over our global family, I declare in the name of Jesus, God who has helped me, may he help you in this season god who has shown me mercy may he show you mercy in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that your faith will not fail i decree and declare that your love for jesus and your love for men and your love for the body of christ will not go down may pride and arrogance be far from your life in the name of jesus may you be men and women of solid character in the name of jesus no weapon fashioned against you will prosper and every tongue that rises up against you we condemn in judgment hear me the fullness of your days you will fulfill in the name of jesus christ and I prophesy over you according to Genesis 17 and verse 6 great and mighty leaders and kings will rise from you captains of industry pastors apostles prophets evangelists teachers in the name of Jesus Christ and I speak over the body of Christ in the name of Jesus we tap from the blessing and the wisdom of our fathers and we declare the body of Christ shall stand every denomination we pray in the name of Jesus may the Lord uphold you from the east to the west we pray for every man of God in this nation who names the name of Christ may the Lord uphold you may the Lord comfort you may the Lord strengthen you in the name of Jesus we pray for Christians in this nation. You are blessed in Jesus name. We pray for Muslims in this nation. You are blessed in Jesus name. We pray for everyone who is part of this nation. You are blessed in Jesus name. We pray for the leaders in this nation. The Lord shows you help and mercy. We pray for our heads of parliament and all the parliamentarians captains of industry you are blessed in Jesus name we pray for our law enforcement agents you are blessed in Jesus name we pray for the judicial
judiciary you are blessed in Jesus name and I pray for everyone in the name of Jesus father give everyone a birthday gift that only you can give and I pray finally for every worker everyone who has stood in as a pillar helping to drive this vision those who are here as the workforce and then those who represent a network of our support systems across the globe in the name of Jesus be blessed in the name of Jesus be blessed for in Jesus name we pray I'd like you to turn to one or two people and say congratulations thank you thank you thank you hallelujah hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain be